Hi everyone. This week um, we're going to start our review for the school year. So um, this school year we've learned about three types of functions. Linear function, linear functions, exponential functions, and quadratic functions. So um, to wrap up our last few weeks of school here, um, we're just going to go back and, and review some of the topics that we've learned for each type of function so far and compare them and and think about how, you know, what's similar, what's different, why do we use different functions in different situations, um, and why are they important. So in this first week, we're just going to review graphing each one. Um, so it's been a while since we graphed linear exponential functions. A few weeks ago we learned how to graph a quadratic function, so hopefully, hopefully that one's still a little fresh. So I'm, I'm going to start by reviewing how to graph a line. So for linear functions, y equals mx plus b. So um, hopefully you guys remember what M and B stand for. M is your slope, which is rise over run. B is your y-intercept, which is where it crosses the y-axis. Um, and so first up, we're just going to graph a couple. So First up, you know, you have to figure out what your m value is, what your b value is, so your, your slope is one third, and your b value is negative four. So the first thing we plot is we plot the y-intercept. Um, so we always use the y-intercept point, and then we use the slope to make a second point. Um, so the y-intercept is at negative four. So we plot a point at negative four. And our slope is one third, and remember slope is rise over run. So we're gonna go up one over three. Remember, so it's it's always up one because the top is rise. But then the run, if it's positive three, we run in the positive direction. Remember, the positive direction is to the right. So we're gonna go up one over three, and there's our line. So hopefully we're okay graphing lines. I know it's been a while. Um, why don't you guys pause and try this one real quick? All right. So for this one, here's slope is negative one. Your b value is five. So the first thing, um, slope should be rise over run. So it's negative one over one. So remember any constant is always divided by one. So your y-intercept is five. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna rise one, but it's negative. So we're gonna rise one, run one. But if it's negative, Instead of running to the right to the positive numbers, we're going to run to the left to the negative numbers. So we're going to go up one over one to the left because of the negative slope. Ta -da. Um, and then in addition to being able to graph the lines yourself, um, you should be able to write the equation based off of the graph. Um, my printer's not awesome, so I sketched them back in, uh, but you guys hopefully can see them. So the first thing you do is identify the y-intercept, so the b-value. In this case, the graph hits the y-axis at 1, so your b-value is 1, and then m, your slope value, start with the y-intercept and go up to the next nice grid point, um, which is here. So your slope is up 1, 2, over 1, which 2 over 1 is just 2. I mean, you can leave it 2 over 1. And remember, it's positive because, you know, we rise 2 and then we run 1, and we run in the positive direction. This is the positive direction, so it's a positive one on the bottom. So your equation is y equals mx plus b, which is up here, y equals mx plus b. Our m value is 2, x plus b, and the b value is 1. The next example, first start off by identifying your y-intercept point. Your y-intercept is here at negative 2, and then count for the slope. So start here, um, there's a couple nice grid point lines. Um, I'm going to use this one. So we're going to rise 1, so the slope is going to be 1 over something. 1, up 1, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 1 fifth. But we went up 1 and then left 5. And if we're going left, we're going towards the negative, so that means it's negative. So your function would be y equals m, negative 1 fifth, x plus B, and your B value is negative 2, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. Um, and you don't have to do plus negative 2, you can just write that as 1 fifth x minus 2. Woo. So this is a recap of graphing lines. We haven't done it in a while. Um, you guys are really good at it when we first learned it, and a lot of the stuff is review from your middle school math. 
Um, so hopefully linear goes okay. Let me know if you have any questions about linear. And then right around semester changing, um, we learned about exponential functions. And so um, exponential functions are all about two things, growth or decay. And so we talked about what this thing, you know, what growth versus decay. And um, if you guys remember, there's lots of lots of applications for growth and decay. We talked a lot about like monetary applications or um, you know bacteria um, populations or even so. My my examples are always like population or um, money. And I'm just gonna focus on um, on positives with you guys. I usually used money when we we're talking about negatives. Um, so we're just gonna stick with like the population type model. So like for example, population grows or decays or um, um, like anything in biology is usually modeled by a growth or decay model. Um, but the structure is y equals a times b to the x. Remember it's called an exponential because the exponent is your, is your variable. Um, the a value out front represented your y-intercept. Um, and your b value, um, so a was your initial value, initial value. So it's like your starting point. So A is your y-intercept, it's your starting point. Um, B is your exponential factor. So this is where growth versus decay comes in. If you're, It's growth if your B value is greater than one, and it's decay if your B value is less than one. Um, so if your B value is like three, that means you're tripling every so often and so it's growing if your b value is like one half that means you're cutting the population in half each time so the population is decaying um and then to graph it so you know a is your y-intercept and then um so that's always the first point you plot is your y-intercept so it's always zero comma a and then your second point is one comma a times b and remember that comes from if you plug one in a times b to the one well b to the one is just b so it's just a times b and so that's why we use the second point and remember you can plot any like as many as you want um but these are just the two easiest points you need two points to graph so these are the two we'll plot because they're the easiest um so for this first example let's just figure out first of all is it growth or decay so look at your b value your B value is less than one, so this is a decay graph. So that means you start high and end near zero. And near zero. Remember, you don't ever cross zero. It just gets really, really close. Because if your population is decaying, that means you start with a lot and end up near zero. So um, the points we're gonna plot, the first one is, um, your y-intercept is 0, 0,4 because it's your a value. So your y-intercept is 4. And then your second point is 1, comma, a times b. 4 times 1 half, half of 4 is 2. So 1, comma, 2. And so there's our two dots. Remember, an exponential graph looks like it's like a curve, kind of. So we start really steep. And as time goes on, we get really close to zero really quickly. So it'll look something like that. Now over here, um, for this example, remember your B value is the one that's got the exponent. So our B value is six, so that means it's growth. Because your B value is bigger than one. If your B value is bigger than one, it's growth. Remember the B value is not the first one, that's your A value. A times B, your B value is six, so it's growing. So that means it's starting near zero. You start with not a lot of people, and it gets really big. So that means you start near zero, start near zero, and then get really big. Oh, get really big. There, great. So your y-intercept point is zero comma A, and A is one half. And then your second point be one comma a times b one half times six half of six is three so your y-intercept is here at one half up next you got one comma three so we start near zero and get really big really quickly Ooh. 
to do a super good job with this graph, but. All right, so then similarly to linear equations, we've also um, worked backwards and we've written equations based on exponentials. So remember the first thing to identify is, is it growth or decay? So for this one, we're starting up high, we're starting high and then getting near zero. So if it starts big and then ends near zero, so it starts really big and then ends near zero. This is, so your population is really big and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as time goes on. So that means this is decay. Versus this one, we're starting near zero and then it gets really, really big. Starts near zero and then gets really big. So if you start near zero and then it gets really big, this is growth. It's growing as time goes on. So, um, and then to write the equations, we're just gonna use our two friendly points. And I have I have them on my graph because that's what I used to graph them because it didn't print well. So there are two points you need, two points. You need the y-intercept, and then you need the one comma a times b point. So to find the y-intercept, you just look at, you know where, where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses at two. So the y-intercept is zero, two. And then at x equals one, your output is one. So it's one comma one. So that means this is your a value, and this is a times b. So, so far we've got y equals, we know it's two times the b value to the x. So to figure out what the b value is, we know that um, it equals one. So one equals a times b. We know the a value is two. So one equals two times b. So to get b by itself, we divide both sides by two. So the b value is one half. So there's our function. And then let's double check. The b value, is it less than one? Yes. And it should be because it's a decay graph. Because it's decaying, your b value should be less than one. It is, we're good to go. Now for example, for this graph, your B value should be greater than one because it's growing. So we'll just make sure that we check that when we get there. So once again, you know, you need two points. You need the y-intercept and you need one comma A times B. All right, well, the y-intercept is zero comma five. So that means five is your A value. And then at one, the output is 10. So we have one comma 10. And so this is A times B. So um, setting up the equation, you know, we've got y equals, we know it's going to be 5 times something to the x. So now we just have to solve for the b value. So we know 10 equals a times b. You know, a is 5, so 10 equals 5b. So your last step is divide both sides by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So your b value is 2. Sweet. So we plug in, and we're done. And then just to double check, it should be a growth function, as we can see that it's growing. And so um, that means our B value should be greater than one, two is bigger than one, so it's growth and we're good to go. All right, it's been a little while since we talked about exponentials, but you guys did really well with exponentials back in the day. Hopefully exponentials can go well. All right, and then lastly, quadratics. Um, so we're just gonna graph three quadratics real quick. Um, it's been a while, it's been a few weeks since we've been graphing quadratics. For those of you guys that participated, um, you all did really well with graphing quadratics. Um, so if you guys struggle with this, just let me know. We can work on it some more. Um, so let's recap. So the first thing you guys know now that, you know, the quadratic um, function is ax squared plus bx plus c. And so you guys know that your first step is, you know, always label a, b, and c values because you're going to need them one way or another. And so um, step one of graphing was to find the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry formula is um, b squared over 2a, negative b squared over 2a. Took me a second, I was like, oh, quadratic formula. I'm like over here thinking about quadratic formula. I'm like, what's just axis symmetry? Negative b squared over 2a. Because then the quadratic formula is, so it has a plus or minus. Um, oh, it's just negative b. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm doing well. Negative b over 2a is axis symmetry. <laughs> I'm confusing myself with quadratic formula. We've been doing too much quadratic stuff lately. Um, all right, so axis symmetry is negative b over 2a. 
And so then what you guys do um, is, and the axis symmetry is the line that quadratic is mirrored, line the quadratic is mirrored over. And it tells you the x value of your vertex. And so your vertex is this value, it's negative b over 2a, comma, whatever you get when you plug in to the quadratic that you were given. And then the y-intercept is just the c-value. Um, and so for most of this, we use Desmos. So I'll do an example with you guys. Um, my notes are getting kind of, this is my exponential stuff. Um, your a value is negative 2. Your b value is 4. Your c value is negative 6. So the first thing you have to find is your axis of symmetry. So plugging in to negative b over 2a. Remember the negative part of the formula. So our b value is 4, so it's negative 4 over 2, and then a is negative 2. So remember, if you guys struggle, like you can go over to Desmos Scientific. Um, I have it pulled up. If you just want to go over to Desmos Scientific and type everything in, go for it. Um, just remember parentheses. Um, this would be negative 4 over 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, which is 1. So your axis symmetry value is 1, so I'm going to go over here to 1 um, for the x output and just put a dotted line because I know that the mirror line is going to be through 1. Now in terms of our vertex, I also know for my vertex that it's going to be 1 comma something. I know that my vertex is going to live on this axis of symmetry line, I just need to figure out where, so I need to know the output. So my vertex is 1 comma something. To figure it out, we plug in, we plug 1 into our quadratic. So negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 6. And I'm just going to go to Desmos Scientific and type that in. So I'm going to go over to Desmos. Um, so I'm going to set it up. Negative 2, parenthesis 1 squared. Oh, I have, uh -huh, I'm not typing anything because my number lock is on. Was it negative 2, 1 squared, negative 2 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 6. We get negative 4, so our vertex is at 1, negative 4. So this equals negative 4, so our vertex is 1, negative 4. So I'm going to plot that point, 1, negative 4. And then your last step is your y-intercept. I'm going to write it over here. Um, the y-intercept for this one is your c-value. And our c-value is negative 6. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 6. And then the last step, a quadratic, um, you have to mirror the y-intercept point. So in terms of the axis of symmetry line, this point is 1 left from the axis of symmetry line, so I'm going to mirror it by going one right in the same spot. And there's our quadratic. Alright, so let's do a couple more. Number 10 um, is similar, but it'll be a little bit different. So first step, a is 2, b is negative 4, c is 6. So step 1 is find the axis of symmetry value, so plug in a negative b over 2a. So negative, the b value is negative 4. Remember, the negative doesn't mean the negative for negative 4. You have to plug in the negative part of the formula. Negative, negative 4 over 2 times 2. Negative, negative 4 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So your axis symmetry is again at 1. So I'm going to put my dotted line at 1. It also tells me the first part of my vertex is going to be 1 comma something. 1 comma something. So we're going to plug 1 in. 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 6. So we'll head back to Desmo Scientific. And this one's really similar, so I'm just going to kind of, we're plugging 1 in again, so I'm going to delete stuff. 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 6. So we get positive 4. So when we plug 1 in, we get 4, so that means my vertex is at 1, 4. So 1, 4. And then last up, my y-intercept is at 0 comma the c value, and in this case the c value is 6, so 0, 6. And then last step, it's 1 to the left from the axis of symmetry line, so it's line, so I'm going to mirror it 1 to the right, and I've got my three points. There's our nice parabola, and we're good to go. 
All right, why don't you guys pause here and try this third example. Um, the quadratic graphing is, is the hardest by far. All right, so our a value is negative one, b is four, c is negative eight. So axis symmetry is negative b over two a, plug in negative four over two times negative one. So negative four is negative four, two times negative one is negative two, Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. So our axis symmetry line is through 2. I don't know if I went out of line. That means the first part of my vertex is going to be 2 comma something. And to find something, we plug in. Um, be careful here because it's negative 2 squared, but you have to put parentheses there for the x. It's negative when we plug in 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 8. So go over to Desmos, type the whole thing in. I'm just going to delete around stuff. Up front should be a negative. We're plugging in two, two squared plus four times two minus eight. Negative four. So we get negative four when we plug in. So our vertex is two negative four. 2, negative 4. And then last step, your y-intercept is 0, comma, the c value, and your c value is negative 8, so it's 0, negative 8. Here's negative 8. Your, uh, and then your last step is you mirror your point. It's 2 to the left of the axis symmetry, so I'm going to go 2 to the right, plot the point. It's our nice parabola. So these three functions, linear, exponential, and quadratic, is what we spent the entire school year learning about. These are the three basic functions that you guys learn about in Algebra, algebra 1. So, you know, hopefully we can compare some of their characteristics. So, you know, a linear function is a straight line. There's a slope. Um, it's got a constant relationship. Um, it's increasing or decreasing at a constant rate. Versus an exponential function has this thing called growth or decay, and it's very rapid. Um, things start really big and get really small quickly or start really small and get really big quickly. And then quadratics have this nice symmetric relationship. Um, and this is most commonly used in like rockets and stuff. Like if you start on the ground and shoot a rocket up into the air, it's going to reach a high point. It's vertex and then it's going to come back down. Um, so this is where quadratics get applied. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions and hopefully this week goes well. It should be review.